how can I get access to a Dunn's number for free? So I'm so glad that you asked because I'm going to give it to you here. So the first thing that you would want to do is you would want to go to dnb.com or dunnandbradstreet.com. Quick Google search. You can't miss it. The page needs to look like this. Now, the arrow indicates where you need to go. So you're going to hit where it says Dunn's number, and then it's going to prompt you with this little drop-down menu right here. From there, you are then going to click where it says get a Dunn's number. Now, I'm going to speak to two kinds of people coming up in these next couple slides, so pay very close attention. The first group of us is for those of us who possibly already have a business. And so what you want to do is you are going to submit, let's say I did a mock here. So I put a zip code where our business is located, and then I put ABC, right? If your business pops up or if you see it, you'll click on it, and then it'll say, congratulations, your business already has a Dunn's number. Now, if you've been in business for some time, you have your EIN, you've already been doing some business, you have some business credit cards, you have some vendor accounts, odds are, and as a matter of fact, I'll say nine times out of 10, you most likely already have a Dunn's number and you don't even know it. I can't tell you how many people I, I, I speak to day in, day out where, yeah, Irv, I've been in business since like 2015. Um, yeah, I've made a couple of purchases here and there, you know, using my LLC, using my, my, my S Corp. Um, but, you know, I, I just I haven't built up any credit. And then when I say, hey, well, you know what? You may want to go to Dun & Bradstreet and see if your business is already registered. Because as soon as you make one purchase, it's already reporting over on that side through your business. You probably don't even know it because it's most likely reporting as a trade reference. But that's enough for them to, again, open up a file for your business over on that side, which is going to save you a lot of time. Because now you don't have to wait, you know, 15, 21, 30 days, however long it's taking for you to get a Dunn's number. Now, the good thing about this is that if your company appears, that means that you already have an active Dunn's number. With that active Dunn's number, most likely you already have a score. Now, some people are pleasantly surprised and they say, well, you know, out of 100, because it ranges from one to 100, 100 being excellent, one being poor, they'll say, wait a minute, I got like a 70. I haven't even really done anything to build this out. Congratulations. You have some, you know, you, you, you're on the right track for building out your business credit. And then some people, they say, this kind of sucks. Like I have a failing score. I'm at a 10 or I'm at a 20, or I had no idea that some of these accounts were even reporting over to Dun & Bradstreet. But the good thing with this is that, again, you are already establishing, again, for those of us that already have, like if you were to do that search right now, you're already on your way. Like you've cut that time in half of how long it takes for you to get that Dun's number and you're one step ahead. But what about those of us that don't have it, right? What about those of us that are on the call and we're just thinking, wait a minute, dude, I, I didn't see my business. I've never even seen this website in my life. You're going to have that feature right there. So I always want you to first search for your business, even if you don't have an account with Dun & Bradstreet, just because you never know. If you have the matching account, again, you're pleasantly surprised, and it says, hey, your account pops up. At that point, claim the account. They're asking you for a couple things about you, your business, you know, your driver's license, copy of your LLC, your EIN. You may need to speak to an account manager on the phone. That's totally fine. Boom, you're in. But if you don't and you've searched your business, at that point, you would just go ahead and select, I don't see my business. And then you would create your account and you would register your business. Now, I usually recommend just go with the free credit signal. Now, if you have no idea what credit signal is, this is essentially where you're able to monitor your credit score with Dun & Bradstreet. Now, I'm going to give you guys some additional resources later on but this is going to give you the most in-depth, uh, what do you call it, scoring tool specific to them because they are the ones that are hosting your data versus a third-party source. So yes, every now and again, we're going to check out other, other places like NAV. Every now and again, we'll check out TOEFL, right? But I always like to go directly to the source because that's, a, that's, a, that's exactly where it's being reported first and it's not being diluted into a third-party software. And so a pro tip for you is the most important thing for now is that you at least have that dot, that nine-digit uh, DUNS number and have an active file prior. Notice that I put an underline. Notice that I made it in bold. Prior to setting up accounts and making purchases. You want to have that nine-digit number first, which again is your DUNS number, prior to going out to Granger. 
prior to going out and applying for Uline, prior to going out and applying for fleet cards, prior to going out uh, to Sam's Club, right? You want to have that because now it's going to, again, speed up your process and you're not having to search to see, okay, what do I need to find first? I'm giving you the first place that you need to go, which is to set up your Dunn's number with Dunn and Bradstreet. But now things start to get, I don't want to use the word complicated, but now things start to get a bit interesting because Experian and Equifax aren't as clear cut as Dun & Bradstreet is. I wish they were, but they're not. Here's what I mean. Experian is widely, and when I say widely, I mean widely used by banks, leasing companies, fintech credit card companies to determine your rates, your terms, and the approval amounts. So for those of us that are saying, okay, well, I want to know more about funding plays. I want to know more about how I can fund my business. You're going, you're going to want to really pay a close eye on Experian and on Equifax, because this is where the majority of financial accounts are going to report versus vendor accounts, right? Again, quick recap, your vendor account is going to be things like your net 30s. Those are your suppliers. Those are things like Uline. So let's say if you buy $100 worth of paper for your business, that's going to be on a net 30 meaning you have 30 days from the day that you were invoiced to make that payment. When we're speaking about vendor accounts, that's business credit cards, fleet cards, um, revolving lines of credit, revolving business uh, credit cards, uh, loans for your business, vehicles. All of that is referred to as, um, as financial accounts for your business. Now, Experian business credit report um, and the score is the most important if you're looking for, again, bank loans, credit cards, and vehicle financing for your business. Now, a major difference, though, is this. It does not allow you to self-report. And I'm, and I'm going right here on the fourth one. It does not allow you to self-report trade references like Dun & Bradstreet. The only way to get listed with them is by having the creditor and the supplier or, or the supplier furnish your data for you directly. And I'm going to give you like a little tip on how to self-publish or um, self-report your own data because there is a difference between trade references and trade experiences. When you are when you are on the Experian website, and this again is over on the business side, you want to fill in your business information, right? The same way that we would do this over with Dun & Bradstreet is the same way that we're doing it now with Experian. And so we want to first see, okay, is there anything that's already on there for my business? Because remember, there's no self-reporting. So that means that if you've already had a business for some time, or if you established a business, you made some purchases through your LLC or through your business, or you have some business credit cards, it's a possibility that there could be something reporting for your business. And so this is how you would search it. You would go right on the Experian business website, right? And then what you would do is you would go ahead and click where it says proceed if you find your business or if your business is listed. If your business is not listed, then that means that it, there's nothing reporting just yet. And so there's no business profile built up just yet for your business. Now, the reason why I have this arrow pointing at with trade lines is because it's exactly as it reads is let's say you do find your business and you, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, wait, I've been in business for a couple of years now. I got a couple of trade lines reporting, a couple of net thirties, net 45s. I have a couple of business credit cards. I took a couple of loans out for, let's say my trucking business or for my construction business. Surely something must be reporting, right? They will tell you off the rip like off the bat, even before you click on your profile to open it up and to claim it, that yes, there are trade lines already attached to your profile. Now, here's like, a, again, split in the road. If your business is listed, again, if your company is listed, then your experience credit report is available for you to view for accuracy. But if it's not listed, then you'll have to wait for you to make a payment and for it to get reported in order for you to see that get listed on there. Now, again, you guys are going to want to do what you're going to want to do with your businesses, but I recommend going ahead and doing your business like a, like a good service and getting yourself the business credit advantage. The reason why I recommend this is because you're going to get access to unlimited reports. You're going to get uh, access to unlimited uh, alerts if anything changes on your credit, if something gets reported, if something gets removed, if a UCC filing hits out of nowhere, you're just gonna, you're going to get it on the dime versus having to wait if you guys are using more of like a third party type of uh, software, right? 
we're having to wait. Okay, wait a minute. Is this accurate? Is this not accurate? Okay, did they scrub this data? No, again, you're getting it, you're getting it directly from the source. And again, that is my pro tip that I have for you is you want to do your business a strong service, get yourself the business credit advantage. Yes, it's an investment. Yes, it's 189, 189 a year. You're only really wanting to build out one credit profile to start out with. I highly recommend it. Because remember, over with the credit signal with Dun & Bradstreet, I recommend the free one anyways. And so if you can't cough up 189 bucks a year for this right here, then you're just going to have to find budget cuts somewhere else in your business. But again, it is a fantastic tool 